the president of the Malaysian Bar, Mr. Christopher Leon. Please give him a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning and uh, thank you all for taking time off from your weekend and family commitments uh, to the Bar Forum this morning. Uh, as you may be aware, the Bar Council of Malaysia has been in the forefront of public interest issues in Malaysia from our inception. We are an independent, and I stress, a politically neutral Bar whose aim is to uphold the rule of law and the cause of justice and to protect the interests of the legal profession as well as that of the public. It is for that reason that on this occasion, the Bar Council is working with selected organizations to create a platform to educate Malaysian voters about the importance of their vote, as well as the processes involved in constituency delineation or delimitation. This is done in recognition of the fact that there appears to be several key flaws currently in the system. And we believe that it is incumbent on the Election Commission to make far-reaching and fundamental changes by the process of delineation, which we hope will happen soon. The imperative must be to establish a platform for fair and free elections in line with democratic principles and international best practices. This will ensure the achievement of one person, one vote, one value for every validly registered voter in Malaysia. This forum will give you the opportunity to evaluate and understand the implications of the current apportionment of seats at the different constituencies, and I think you will, like the rest of us, realize that there are several glaring points of contention. I would like to emphasize that the issue of malapportionment and gerrymandering is not something new. It is not something that has come about in recent times. It is critical that you, as voters and concerned citizens, appreciate that Malaysia's history is scattered with election and delineation discrepancies, even from independence. In, in some instances, it has been justified on the grounds of the unique cultural demo uh, demographics of our nation and the fundamental urban and rural divide that continues to exist even after its 57 years of independence. It is in taking cognizance of this and the need to move in the right direction that we have organized this public forum. The focus of this forum is to inform the Malaysian voter that their right to be heard is not only manifest when there is a general election or by-election, but rather that they are able to continue to contribute to the growth of a democratic electoral system in Malaysia at critical times in Malaysia's history. One such time is when the Election Commission, which is statutorily empowered to review constituency boundaries at least once every eight years, may be on the verge of doing so. As I understand it, constituency delineation has two aspects that can affect electoral outcomes. One, the distribution of the total electoral among constituencies, or what is called apportionment, and two, the determination of constituency boundaries themselves, districting. According to Dr. Lim Hong Hai, retired professor from University Science Malaysia, who, who will be speaking at this event, where delineation where delineating constituencies results in unequal electorates. This amounts to malapportionment and may manifest as favoring parties with more supporters in a smaller constituency. And two, where constituency boundaries are drawn to the advantage of a political party, and this usually occurs in favor of the ruling party for the time being, the practice is called gerrymandering. While I'm happy to leave the details of constituency delimitation in the hands of experts, there are some key points from our history with regard to constituency delineation in Malaysia, I like to raise. There have been several delineation exercises conducted over the years in order to update the voting rules. While the general proposition is that the lines should be drawn to reflect the internationally accepted best practice of one person, one vote, one value, 
This has not been achieved in Malaysia. In 1954, the Federal Legislative Council's committee recommended that the numbers of inhabitants within each constituency should be approximately equal, except that having regard to the greater difficulty of contacting voters in the country districts and the other disadvantages facing rural constituencies, a measure of weightage for area should be given to the rural constituencies. That report states that the committee would not regard such weightage as unreasonable if in some instances a rural constituency should contain as little as one half of the constituents in the more populous areas. Basically, the effect of this was that the value of a rural vote could, in some instances, be double that of an urban vote. This was justified on grounds of a rural-urban divide. Changes were made to this in 1957, taking into account the recommission, this is the year of our independence, that there should be a 15% limit on deviations from the average constituency electorate. This was adopted and incorporated as Article 116, sub-Article 3 and sub-Article 4 of our Federal Constitution. According to Dr. Lim's writings, the Constitution Amendment Act of 1962 was enacted subsequently as the ruling alliance's response to the poor showing in their favour in the 1959 general elections and at the subsequent local elections in 1961. Section 2C of the 13th Schedule of the Federal Constitution provided new rules for delineating constituencies in future reviews resulting in the restoration of the pre-independent 2 to 1 rural weightage, thereby backtracking on the Reed Commission's recommendations. The Constitution Amendment Act of 1962 also increased the government's powers of control over the Election Commission by empowering Parliament to determine the terms of office of members of the Election Commission other than their remuneration. In 1963, the Malaysia Act made extensive amendments to the Federal Constitution to take into account the addition of Singapore, Sabah and Sarawak, although it did not touch on the weightage issue, but was more focused on the distribution of seats among the different stakeholders. The next major change was in 1973, after the 1969 elections. It must be hi highlighted that this was arguably in response to the poor showing in favour of the ruling party. As a consequence, according to Dr. Lin, the provisions of Section 2C of the, of the 13th Schedule that was introduced in 1962 that limited constituencies to a 2 to 1 rural weightage was replaced with a new Section 2C which states, and I quote, the number of electors within each constituency in a state ought to be approximately equal except that, having regard to the greater difficulty of reaching electors in country districts and the other disadvantages facing rural constituencies, a measure of weightage for area ought to be given to such constituencies. End of quote. This is intentionally vague and does not specify a number or percentage of weightage. It is critical to understand that the implication of this provision is that it completely removed the specific constitutional limits to rural weightage. It would be useful to highlight at this point that this is the current provision in our laws and in our federal constitution. This is very fundamental in real terms because it means that at, at its extreme, it would be impossible to attain any version of the notion of one person, one vote, one value. It would therefore be possible to have instances where, for example, one vote in constituency A would be worth nine votes or even more in constituency B. In 1984, the reform to the law on delineation was also fundamental. Amongst the changes was the removal of the upper limit of 10 years for constituency review. This was replaced with an interval of not less than eight years between the completion of one review and the date of commencement of the next review. This is found in Article 113, sub-Article 2 of the Federal Constitution. 
This meant that the Election Commission had the absolute discretion to determine when constituencies needed to be reviewed and there would be no ceiling on when they could be compelled to do so. Ten years later, the 1994 amendments resulted in one key change with the introduction of electoral ranges for both federal and state constituencies within five categories. These categories are classified as rural, semi-rural, semi-urban, town or urban. The Election Commission attempted to define the minimum and maximum number of votes in each of these categories at parliamentary and state levels. A review of the recommendations for distribution of voters by the Election Commission suggests that in its simplest form, the value of the city vote for parliamentary constituencies could be 3.5 times less in value than the rural vote. And the value of the city vote for state constituencies could be five times less in value than the rural vote. In simple terms, this means that uh, depending on which constituencies you may find yourself, your vote, uh, one vote in your constituency uh, may be equal to five votes in another constituency that would be needed to elect somebody into office. As a result, the 2003 and 2005 delineation exercise, which was the last time that Malaysia underwent such an exercise, the number of parliamentary seats was increased by a total of 20 for Peninsula Malaysia, Lamar and Sabah uh, in 2003, and by three seats for Sarawak uh, in 2005, resulting in the current 222 seats in total. Having said all that, I think it is useful to know that these existing rules, while perceived to be contrary to good governance and certainly divergent from the international best electoral delineation practices, can also be used to the advantage of making a positive change. This is where I believe your role as concerned and proactive citizens and stakeholders will come in. I hope that the two days of this forum will instill in you a sense that there is something positive that you can do, and more importantly, show you the steps that you will need to take to do it. The primary reason for this forum is to inform Malaysians that even though the general elections are over, the opportunities to make a difference are not. I would like to appeal to the Election Commission to take the next steps to correct the existing flaws in the system and aim to achieve one person, one vote, one value, taking into account the variances that are unique to the Malaysian electoral demographics. We hope that this forum will demonstrate to the Election Commission that we want to be engaged and to contribute to this process. And we ask that the, rule, that the role that civil society can play in making a difference be recognized. This will be a true exercise in democracy by a nation very much in need of such a commitment and a reflection that the current government is cognizant of the needs of its people and the growth of our young nation. The fact is, the current government is plagued by a perspective that they hold their political position due to the outcome of how constituency boundaries have been drawn which are not equitable and which ignore some fundamental truths expected of a democratic uh, nation. For instance, we all know that the results of the 13th general election uh, show that uh, the government of the day uh, lost the popular vote. They only got about 47.38% of the popular vote. However, that was sufficient to result in them uh, retaining 60% uh, approximately of the votes in Parliament. In comparison, Pakatan Rakyat Karpsen Party Kaadlan Rakyat had 20.39% of the vote. And this resulted in them obtaining 13.15% of the seats. DAP had 15.71% of the popular vote, and this resulted in them obtaining 17.12% of the seats, while PASS had 14.77% of the vote. This resulted in them obtaining only about 9% of the seats. A government cannot be called democratic simply because its electorate can participate in general elections. 
The true test of democracy is in looking at the structure and mechanics that are put in place in the implementation of the electoral system. The election commission, uh, campaign, the election campaign, and the election itself, and in not finding that system wanting. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged indeed to be working with Tindak Malaysia as well as organizations such as Bursay, Engage, Project Barres, and stalwarts on the development of constitutional and electoral law and human rights in Malaysia, such as, such as Tan Sri Hasmi Agam of Suhakam, Dr. Bridget Welsh of Singapore Management University, Dr. Wong, Dr. Wong Chin Huat of the Penang Institute, Professor James Chin from Monash University in Malaysia, Dr. Lim Hong Hai, formerly from University of Science Malaysia, Dr. Shaharuddin Baharuddin from Acad Academy of Medical Democracy and Kerala Negara, Ibrahim Sofian of Medical Center, Said Ibrahim Said Noor of uh, Mafra, and of course all of the distinguished speakers for the forum, uh, for this two day forum, uh, I would like to uh, make a particular mention of Dr. Lisa Henley, who has taken time and come all the way from the US uh, to be with us, to share with us uh, our experience. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to me, and I hope that you will take uh, much value uh, from, the, from the two day conference uh, forum. Thank you.